Hello and welcome to the 22nd tutorial on the C++ programming series and in this part we will be looking at conditional statements. Conditional statements allow you to execute a block of code but only if a condition is met. This is extremely useful in a program so you're going to be actively checking if the user has done stuff or if certain um, actions have occurred then you will execute a certain piece of code, basically perform a certain function. So let's just show you how they work. There's quite a few different conditional statements. Actually, there's more one and the others are just extensions of the, con the original base conditional statement, all of which you will most likely use a lot all the time. So what we're going to do is create a variable called i, make it equal to 9. So the first conditional statement we're going to be looking at, the first part is the if statement which just basically checks does a certain value equal a number value of which we can substitute variables as well so if we this is the general format of an if statement and in here you put your condition so I'm just going to put i double equals 9 remember when we looked at operators earlier on in this series we said that the double equals is the comparison operator where the single equal is the assignment operator you can also combine other operators so you can do and and they can do multiple condition or or, or all of which we've looked at earlier on so if you want more information just flip back in this series so what let's do is i equals 9 then we're just going to see out something simple like i is 9 um, std c out not mean in line. Run it and says I. It says I is nine. But if we change I to let's say eight, basically eight doesn't equal nine. So nothing should be printed out and nothing was printed out because I didn't equal nine. These brackets aren't actually. I mean these curly braces aren't actually necessary at all. If you don't have these curly braces only the in the following line will actually be present within the conditions within the if statement so if I put 9 there again it's only the first following code line will be in there so if I put like another line below here this will be technically outside the if statement but I generally put uh, curly braces in if the one line simply because it's a lot neater and easier to read but this way you can have multiple lines here you can also have nested ifs basically you can have an if within that and an if within that if you really want it it's quite common practice as well in a very complex program the next conditional statement we're going to look at is the else statement which basically runs this piece of code if the if statement is false and the syntax of that is you put the keyword else no condition because it's just saying otherwise run this piece of code so I'm going to put std I'm going to put i is not valid run it i is 9 but if we put i to 8 it says i is not valid basically it goes through this does 8 equal 9 no it does not otherwise just run this piece of code and it's the same situation here as well you don't have to have the curly braces it'll be the same with all the others so I won't mention it after this you don't have to have the curly braces and you can have multiple lines up only if you have the curly braces so the next part we're going to be looking at is the else if statement and the else if goes between the if and the else else if this is this basically just says if this statement is false then check this statement, they can have multiple else if, if you want to, otherwise if all of them fail, it'll just bump back to the else statement. You might think, uh, can you just have an if statement on its own? Yeah, you can, there's nothing wrong with that. But if, for example, in this in this instance, let me just write it so, so you can see it visually. If here we do i equals equals 8, and we do i equals equals 7 and we're just going to simply copy and paste this the reason 
why you may not want to do the several if statement thing, you want to do if, else if, else if, etc., is in this instance, i equals 8. So if we do i equal if 8 equals 9, no. Does 8 equal 8? Yes. Then by definition, 8 doesn't equal 7 because if this condition is true, then the other conditions can't be true. Obviously, you might change the value of i or any other variable, therefore you might want an if statement, but obviously that will depend on your situation and that's something you're going to have to judge when you're programming your application. So if I just run this, does i is 8? If I put 7, it says i is 7, but if I were to just put 67, it says i is not valid. And like I say, you can have as many else ifs as you want, and the else isn't compulsory, so I can get rid of that. So if i isn't one, it isn't valid and it's not one of these conditions, then it doesn't print out anything. So you can have if on its own, you can have if else if, you can have if else or if else if else, and like I said, you can have multiple else ifs. Remember, again, I'm just going to mention it one more time, the curly braces aren't necessary, but they help organize code. Plus, if you want multiple lines in the condition statement, you need to have the curly braces. Sorry about that. That's it for this, this notification. That's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at the for loop. If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at sonasystem.co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can comment on this video or just directly message us via YouTube. You can do whatever you feel comfortable with. All the required links for source code will also be in the description. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a nice day.